I know he's going to cross right here, so I'm going to sit there and go, flip, like this. All I'm going to get is the two tails going the other direction, because they're too fast and I'm not fast enough to cap capture it. But I do get their tails going the other way. But if I'm following one of the planes, and it's, for me it's easier to go left to right. So I'm sitting there, and I'm going, and I'm following him, and I know that I can take seven or nine frames per second. I'm going to sit there about a second away from where they're going to be, and I'm going to go from right here, and as soon as I get one second away, this is where you get used to your camera. You go one second away, you go click, 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 click. That one. Because you're actually going to be following through. Panning works like this. There's the first picture. He's right here. Then I went to the second picture. I just held the button down. Click, 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 click as it went. The third picture, and there's the fourth picture. And if that's how you get those kind of shots. It's not rocket science. It's about what, why it wasn't. This is like beyond, that's a specular highlight, and that's beyond the range. So no matter what we set it on, that's gonna be white no matter what, because it's above no matter any picture. This picture I've had published in magazines and the newspaper, and what, what you have to do is you have to pick a spot to focus, because at 600 miles an hour, even with the hyperdrives on some of these cameras, it can't keep up with the motion. It's gonna keep trying, but it's gonna be lagging behind all the time, trying to keep focused up like that. He was doing 600 miles an hour. That's that one. And that's a once in a, he, they only do that one once, a once per show. And so that's either you get it this time or you come back the next day and do it. But he was just screaming. And he went, and, I, and all I did was took some repetitive shots, went click, 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 like this. But the problem was, it was in such a situation at that speed that I had to pre-focus. And by pre-focusing, I knew that there was a barge farther out off to the side and there was also the pier that was the two things that they were using for pointers and if I can make the pier and the barge be in focus guess what folks anything in the middle is going to be in focus as well so I set it that way locked it took my hand off of it took up put it on manual focus so it wouldn't change locked it in there so all I had to do was go click 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 and sure, the first few frames it was out of focus, but as he got the right where I wanted it, he was in focus and that's the picture I got. So that's where you have to kind of plan ahead a little bit so that you can go ahead and know that he's gonna be going this way and, and you know the path that they're gonna go. And this happens in, in sports, certain areas of the field, all kinds of things too. And by knowing a little bit about surfing or, and, you know, and everybody has a favorite thing that they know a little bit more about, a sport or an event that they know a little bit more about and that would be the one you're gonna get your best shots from. Develop a sense of timing. This really becomes uh, one of those cases where the more you use it, the better you get, because you gotta get that thing all set up to where it's going to be. Uh, all cameras react differently, like I was talking about. Yeah, there's just enough difference. Uh, be sure to spend some time with your camera before you go on a trip. Nothing is worse, and I see this on cruise boats all the time, they get a brand new camera given to them and they sit in the cabin for the first three days trying to figure out what in the heck to do with the camera. I even had somebody ask me, where do you put the film in the digital camera? Yeah, I mean, that's true. It's not really, I mean, it's, it's like you laugh, but it's just kind of, if you never had the digital camera, it's hard to think of the concept of not needing film so that they can take some decent pictures and enjoy what they're doing and enjoy the cruise. It just takes a little planning and knowledge to make it work. And soon you'll be able to anticipate exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen next. Now, so uh, once again, practice, practice, practice. Have fun with shots too. I love doing fashion work. This is fun. About 600 and something pictures. And we, he went back and they left. Everybody left. He says, I need a beer. And I said, yeah, I'll have one too. He says, you know, you kept me so busy. Big difference. If you're, pho if you're bored with your photographs, the people looking at your photographs are going to be bored. Well, don't trust automatic settings. And here's now here's another one. Taking pics I did seven in Las Vegas. They're a band that actually I know from Hawaii. They're good friends of mine. Anyhow, they hired me to come in and take pictures for them. And uh, the thing, the trick to this is, have you ever tried to take a picture at a concert? 
what happens? You get this white ghost standing on the stage because all the dark area, your camera's trying to adjust for it. And it says, oh, it's so dark, I'm going to bring this up. So then the, the, the subject turns pure white. Now it's the same thing like you're taking a picture of the moon, you get this white blob in the middle of the sky because it's too bright because it's trying to adjust for the sky. If you adjust for skin tones and use the spot metering on your metering on your camera, that's the one that has the little circle in the middle by itself, the little dot, that's going to mean that when you put that focusing element on that spot, that's where it's going to be setting the exposure for as well as focusing. By doing that, it made the background very dark. Who cares? That's not part of the subject. She's part of the subject. She is the subject. So you get this action shot, and then here's another version of it this way. So that way, by focusing on her face, she was properly exposed, and it added accent because the background turned to total black. Mergers, that's another thing, too. It's not just like, you know, Bell South and AT&T merging or something like that. No, it's something else that can be totally different. What it is, is it's something that unnatural, growing out of something in an, un in an unpredictable way, sort of like this. <laughs> growing out of his head. All you have to do is move him over a little bit and then he doesn't have that. But it looks like it's really kind of cool. One of my favorite ones is this one. This one, this one I actually took, I accidentally, accidentally did this and I said, God, I really messed up on this one. But I kept it because this is my cousin Deanna and it looked like she got a candle stuck up her nose. Not a real, not a real good uh, example of, uh, of proper photography etiquette here, but it's still, the point is that I didn't pay attention to what she was doing, so she, that's why she looked. My favorite one I didn't take. This is one of my favorite ones. This was taken at the Jaguar game on September 20th, 2004. <laughs> with the, with, the, with the, the light growing out of Byron Leftwich's head. That's one of my favorite pictures. Now, the, I don't understand why they left it in there. Cause Ten seconds of Photoshop, they could have got rid of that. No problem at all. Picture. You, you can buy, decompose the picture. Now, you know, we talked about a problem before but where you couldn't necessarily lock the exposure or not, uh, have to recompose it. But notice by locking on the eye, see the eyes in focus? I didn't see at the time I took the picture, but after I took the picture, notice a little drop of water on the end of the beak. Because I focused on the eyes and did that rule of thirds of one third before, two thirds back, the whole bird stayed in focus, yet the water depth of field was out of focus. Now, uh, try to take pictures, especially in natural light, por uh, portraits in natural light. Position the subject with the sun to the back or to the side. How many times have you ever seen people take pictures and you wonder why their eyes are like this? Because you say, let's go outside and take a picture. They put them put something facing the sun. Because, yeah, I want it to be well lit. But you do that, and then they, they get, their eyes are closed. You're looking through the viewfinder. It doesn't make a difference. Your eyes are wide open because the sun's behind you. So, but you can always do something. Turn the flash on. Did you know the flash works equally well in daytime as it does at night? It will actually work. And you, what happens is you get to fill the subject in with light. Here's a picture I took. At, not, at the daytime, early in the morning. When I do models, I like to do them between sunrise and about 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 to sunset. I don't like the overhead light. It's not flattering to a woman's figure or anything. So you notice the light hitting her hair. It's like a hair light. You're going to learn more about this next week when we, talk, when we actually do uh, lighting. And, but it lights her up. Now, normal under normal conditions, this, if I metered on her, it would make her this all been washed out because it had been too bright because it was, because it was she was in a shadow because she had the sun behind her. But by using a flash, it equalized everything. You see the water, you see the background, and you see her, and it balances everything out.